Hello everybody. We're going to talk about multiple sclerosis for this video. I'm going to try to break it into two videos. One, a little bit about what multiple sclerosis is. Second, a little bit about treatment. So this is video one. Multiple sclerosis isn't really one disease. Uh, 100 years ago, lots of things were thrown into the same general bucket as being the palsy or something like that. And as time goes on, we learn that what uh, we were throwing into one diagnosis bucket actually is multiple different diseases. The same is true with multiple sclerosis. Now there are, broadly speaking, four kinds of MS or MS type of diseases that are recognized. All of them have something in common. That is, the immune system, through a variety of mechanisms, is attacking the insulation inside the brain and or spinal cord. So the insulation is on the wires. The nerve cells communicate with each other with the different wires, axons we call them, and they're surrounded by insulation because insulation is nice and it makes things conduct better and faster, just like in your house. But if you have an immune process that now and again attacks that insulation in little pockets here and there, you have multiple sclerosis. So the four types. Most people with multiple sclerosis have relapsing, remitting, MS. They have attacks. There's a problem with how the nerves in that area are working for a time. And then there's a variable amount of repair. And they remit. So they have a relapse or an attack. And then they remit. So relapsing, remitting MS. That's clearly far and away the most frequent kind of MS. There's also primary progressive MS. So that's somebody who may start with an attack, but then they don't really have attacks. They just kind of get worse year by year by year. Clearly a different kind of mechanism must be involved. Now there's a, a third one called Devic syndrome, also known as neuromyelitis optica, which is a special kind of MS uh, syndrome that really loves to attack the optic nerve that carries information from the eye into the brain and the spinal cord. Recently uh, my colleagues at uh, Mayo Clinic have uh, done a lot of work with certain antibodies that seem to be really prevalent in that disease. Uh, so we have relapsing remitting MS, primary progressive MS, Devic syndrome, and then a, there's another one called uh, ADEM, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, which is uh, very rare. Uh, it's a large, large, single, hot uh, MS uh, attack in much of the brain. Now, what do you call it when somebody has their first attack? Because, you know, multiple sclerosis has multiple in the name. And so, generally speaking, we're looking for multiple attacks, both multiple in time and multiple in space, meaning different parts of the brain or spinal cord are, are affected at different times. So if you only have one attack, you know, we always used to struggle with this. When somebody comes in with uh, inflammation of that optic nerve, we call optic neuritis. So uh, what do you call that? Well, people who are uh, smarter in theory than I have come up with a rather silly name. Uh, I, I, I really, for life, me can't fathom why they came up with this name of a clinically isolated syndrome. It doesn't even tell you what body parts affect it, but that's what it's called, a clinically isolated syndrome. So a person who has a single pocket, a single attack of, of inflammation of the, the insulation on the wires of the brain or spinal cord has a clinically isolated syndrome. Some of those people, that's the first attack of MS. Some of those people, it's just an attack that they had and they're never going to have another one and they don't go on to have MS. Uh, research has shown us some things which do seem to help us get a grasp on who's more likely to go down the road of having MS and who's more likely to not actually have MS. We just had a single attack of inflammation. So that's a quick Cook's tour on uh, how, how to sort of categorize MS. So why do people get it? Short answer, we don't know. Longer answer, uh, there are some genes that run in families, and I emphasize it's genes, multiple genes. 
at least a hundred genes have been identified which seem to confer some kind of uh, susceptibility to getting MS. If you have some of the genes, it doesn't mean you're going to get MS. It means your chances of getting MS are a little bit higher. It's not that rare that I see somebody who has multiple sclerosis and I ask him uh, uh, around in the family and sure enough there's a, a brother or a mom or a, a cousin or somebody a little bit close uh, genetically who has multiple sclerosis. But if you are in a family and you have a mother or father, brother, sister, or child with MS, by no means does it mean that you are destined to get MS. And the genes don't really explain the whole susceptibility or the likelihood of getting MS. Where you grew up in the first decade and a half or so of your life also seems to confer some risk. So I practice in Minnesota in the United States. It's kind of in the northern part of the United States. Yeah, it gets really cold here. And we just see uh, more MS than we than you'll see in Mexico or, or Panama. So the general rule is the further from the equator you get, the more multiple sclerosis you tend to see. Well, first, MS, particularly relapsing remitting MS, which is most MS, is more or less a disease of the younger people. You don't really see folks wandering in with their first ever uh, demyelinating MS attack at uh, 55 or 61 or something like that. Has it happened? Of course it's happened and it's been reported. In fact, they like to publish papers about that because it's so rare. If it was garden variety, you wouldn't write a scientific report about it. So MS, predominantly a disorder of younger people. There uh, is something else I want to talk about, MS attacks. Um, an, an MS attack is an inflammatory process. It's inflammation mediated by the immune system. So the immune system is attacking a region of cells somewhere in the brain or spinal cord. So it ought to come on kind of like an inflammatory process, like inflammation. So whenever somebody says, I had an attack of MS, yesterday at 2.35 in the afternoon, I know that's probably not right. Think about inflammation. Think about uh, a sore throat. You had a sore throat or you had inflammation in the joint. It doesn't come on like that. It takes an hour or two or three or maybe a day to build up. So MS attacks, likewise, generally speaking, take hours to a day or so to build up. Now, yeah, it's hard to really be sure uh, how long it took to come on. When you went to bed, fine, and then you woke up with a problem. So maybe it came on instantly, or maybe it came on gradually, or you know, three or four, five hours, six or eight hours, something like that. But generally speaking, an attack of MS with relapsing remitting MS should act like an inflammatory process. So I often think of it as, as you're cruising along and you're doing okay, the inflammation starts and you get your problems, it stays up for a time, and then as the body's natural defenses start to repair, you often see a slow uh, improvement. But notice, it comes on a lot faster, typically, than it gets better. But often they do get better. In fact, sometimes they get completely better, sometimes they don't get much better, and sometimes it's uh, in between. And it's quite hard to predict. We're going to talk about treatment in the other video, though. Remember that. So there's another thing that is often worrisome for people with multiple sclerosis, and that is uh, an attack or a seeming attack. Uh, we call this a pseudo exacerbation, and it's not pseudo because the person's faking it. It's pseudo because it seems to act like an attack, but it isn't. And this is somebody who may have had an attack. Let's just say they had an attack where their right arm and the right leg got uh, uh, a little bit weak and numb. And so that came on, and then over the course of a month or two or three, they recovered and did quite well. Uh, maybe not, maybe they got 95% better. And then one day, it just seemed to get a lot worse. So it's like it came back. And they'll call up my office and, oh, Dr. Reeves, you know, I, I, I have another attack. My right side of numbness and weakness are back. 
and then in a day or two they're they're better well that's probably not an attack it's a re return of their prior symptoms and we often see this when somebody's had a fever they've been sick for some other reason they've been really stressed out uh, their battery has just run down and they've been uh, go 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 and they're just exhausted or, or some, some things kind of upset their system a bit and these symptoms that they had before that they recovered from kind of blossom for a day or two or three but they don't uh, take the weeks and months to recover so that's a pseudo exacerbation it's important to try to tease apart it's kind of sometimes hard frankly but it's important to try to tease apart between a pseudo exacerbation and a true relapse because the pseudo exacerbation is treated with time and the relapse is treated differently which is the other video so multiple sclerosis multiple attacks of immune mediated inflammation involving brain or spinal cord and brain includes the optic nerve that carries your vision stuff back to your brain uh, so multiple attacks in space so you see them in several different places on the scan and multiple attacks over time the attacks come on in the same time course as you would expect for something that's caused by inflammation and the recovery may be complete it may be partial occasionally there's not much recovery and that have but when there is recovery it happens over weeks to months and that is the end of this video on a very quick Cook's tour of multiple sclerosis. I hope you will uh, look at the other video on treatment because that video is much more exciting in terms of how the future looks. Thanks for watching.